Hi, welcome to the online course of business planning under the general heading how to prepare a business plan. First of all, I introduce myself and for introducing myself, I get a little bit bigger in that window. My name is Krzysztof Waśniewski. I am Polish. I am recording that from Poland. Professionally, I am two things. I am a university professor at the Andrzej Fritz Modrzewski University in Kraków, Poland. And uh, in my spare times, I am a small investor in the stock market. And as a small investor, I am quite successful. For example, this year, 2020, in spite of the whole COVID story, I made a 46% return on my invested cash since January this year, which is quite a nice performance, given what you have, uh, what you can have on your cash when deposited with the bank. Okay, so this is a course of business planning, and this is the introductory video to this course. So here I like lay down the basic principles of how we are going to work together. And as principles come, I slowly unveil the PowerPoint presentation which I have prepared for this, for this occurrence. So it is business planning, number one, introduction. In the title slide of my presentation, I put two people whom I intuitively associate with like positive creation of business. Uh, you have Nikola Tesla and uh, Thomas Edison. So this is my understanding of like positive business planning. Essentially focus on doing innovation, on implementing something truly new, something that makes a difference in the world and do it smartly. Do it as a seasoned, smart, crafty business person so as to have results instead of just having intentions. So, principles of the course. Maybe I move here to explain it better. I make that print a little bit bigger in the window. Okay, building a business plan means drafting and pitching a strategy. So, you will essentially learn in this course two separate skills or two connected skills how to pitch and present your ideas. By pitching, I, um, I mean, well, to pitch is a verb from the professional jargon of business planning, business and finance. When you pitch a business concept, you present it to other people in an attractive and convincing way. Hmm? You try to convince them to put money in, in your business. And in this course, business planning is understood as a process of defining and communicating a business concept convincingly enough to talk people into engaging their resources with the project. And we assume that the business is never completely settled. So when you prepare and pitch a business plan, you do your homework, but you are well aware that things change. What you have written in the business plan can be subject to change. And your ability, your craftiness, your art in preparing a business plan will be helpful in quickly modifying that business plan if the external exogenous circumstances change as well. So a business plan is never definitive and the good business plan proves that I have put enough thinking into outlining the business concept to grasp the main opportunities and the main risk factors as well as the path to exploit the former, and, uh, the former and manage the latter. Okay, now a quick jump to the skills on the development of which I want to focus in that course. First of all, the skill of using a technique called business modeling. This is in the first bullet point of that slide. Secondly, doing market research. Thirdly, planning my financials in the business plan. And finally, assessing my risks and planning for the corresponding contingencies. These are the takeaways I would like you to have when you finish this course. 
Now a little word about the structure of the course. Now maybe I should go a little bit smaller in that presentation because I show here another important person whom I refer to as like a benchmark in your learning. The face that you can see in the picture above me is the face of Pablo Picasso. And Pablo Picasso had that saying, or it is a saying attributed to him, to be honest. When a stroke of genius comes to me, it finds me with my sleeves up, working hard. And effectively, Picasso had a reputation to be crazily hardworking as artists come. For him, according to all the interviews that I could read about him uh, or, or with him, for him, art was like a nine to five job. I start in the morning, I stop in the afternoon, and I just do it, I just work. Huh? He was reputed to create dozens, sometimes many dozens of sketches and studies for each of the big works of art from him that we can contemplate and admire today. So the general idea here is the body of the course, the strictly speaking instructional part, is structured into educational activities. Activities mean that you practice, you perform some exercises. So you do that practice on your own as you follow the course. And each of those practices serve to develop your skills. Once again, in this course, I focus on skills. I assume that theoretical knowledge, which might be somehow concurrent or complementary to this course. You can have it from wherever you want. What I would like you to do is to follow a path of learning, learning through practice. So business planning is a skill and we develop skills through practice. It is like learning to play tennis. You need to hit that ball hundreds of times before hitting it like really right for the first time. Now, general principles of your practice, I move to, excuse me, I, I not the slide, I move to the, to the other side of the screen. So, repeat and practice the activities described in the course as frequently as you feel like to. At least once a week is a good idea. You can practice more frequently. Make a subjective scale. 1 to 10 or 1 to 20 or whatever to measure the quality of your work. Self-assess yourself. Important. After each practice, grade yourself or ask someone else to do it. No down each grade. When you practice, be sort of quick and expeditive. I don't want you to spend hours on each activity. I want you to be like snappy, quick, expeditive, uh, like, you really do it. Eh? When you sit in front of your computer to practice something, just dive into it. Don't yield to distractions. Really, like, 30 minutes of honest, focused work is worth much more than five hours of, like, intermittent, distracted work. So when you practice, be quick and expeditive. Sessions of more than 60 minutes are not really advisable. Like, really. Staying below 45 minutes with each session is a good move. The purpose is to train your brain not to impress someone. Now, another concept which I would like you to follow, continuity of ideas in your practice. Uh, that's a concept which I have, which I personally have from practicing sports. In my practice of sports, I have something like a constant path and variations on it. So, I strongly recommend you to keep a journal of activities. So, both their content and their grading. Take the habit of keeping something like Dr. Frankenstein's notes. Huh? That today is my next monster failed to survive. Huh? Something like that. From time to time, go back and review those notes. It is useful. Like, really. Hmm? I say it by experience. For example, this is how I developed my skills as a stock market investors. 
as a stock market investor, I am, I am sorry. I just did things, I did my investments, I noted down what I think about it, and then I passed in review my notes. And this is how I developed quite nice investment skills. When you repeat and practice those activities, you can divide your business concepts, those that we'll work with, into two groups. The constant ones and the, inter uh, let's say, the, the accidental ones. So, on the one hand, keep returning over and over again to the same business concepts. Those business concepts will be like your sparring partners. After each activity, it is good to measure yourself against those business concepts. How much more can I bring to that business concept after I passed through another activity in this course? And on the other hand, from time to time, you can give yourself a little bit of loose in the shoulders to, uh, by practicing with completely new business concepts. For example, with completely crazy business ideas, maybe with something that someone suggests to you. Hmm? For each of the activities in this course, I make two videos. One instructional and one demonstrative, one demonstration. In the first video, I explain the logic behind the activity and the content of that activity. And in the latter, I show you how I do it in, a, in real time. So I really have just like a page of notes in my notebook. I sit in front of my computer and I improvise around the activity hmm, in question. I think it is important to show how those practices can be performed like in real time. And here, once again, I promise, I am 100% pure real beef in those demos. What you see on the screen is what I have already and really done. It is not an edited video, I haven't cut anything. It is all real, unedited. And finally, your like takeaways after you finish uh, as a complement to this video, to this instructional video, to this intro, you can find, excuse me, I have to move it a little bit. You can find a PDF presentation with those slides and you can go, for example, to my YouTube channel for other instructional videos more or less related to business, economics, business planning. And you can also use a tool uh, which I call Business Planning Calculator. It is available via my blog site, Discover Social Sciences. This is essentially a workbook in Excel which allows you to do quick calculations, mostly the financial ones, for your business plan. Okay, so that would be it in that introduction. Uh, I hope you follow along in those activities and I hope you have fun with it, that you learn something. Okay, bye. See you later in other activities.